Okay, welcome to um, 12B. Um, if, you guys, if you guys haven't seen 12B, go have a look at it because I just finished explaining why I think Ison has wings because A, it's circular and I explained the theory, my theory at least, as to why I believe it is um, been energized enough and why it sprouted wings, okay? So if you haven't seen 12A, go have a look at it. Now let's, let's concentrate on um, the size of Ison, okay? On its mass, because in order for it to be spherical in shape, it has to achieve a hydrostatic equilibrium, and in order to do that, it has to have a certain mass, okay? Now, Ison was discovered uh, in September of 2012 uh, by these two characters here, okay, with this dinky little telescope. Now, why do I say dinky? Well, because this, uh, this is obviously not a, one of those, you know, huge observatory telescopes that can see into the far reaches of the galaxy, okay? Um, so, this is, uh, this is basically uh, one or two steps up from um, Bruce Gary's 11-inch uh, Celestron, okay? Uh, this is, this is, in my opinion, this is not a very, this is not an extremely powerful telescope. It is not bad, but, you know, it's, anyways. Um, let's have a look at something here, shall we? Just to put things into perspective. This is the Earth, okay, in front of the Sun. Earth to scale of the Sun, okay? Now, if from here on Earth, if we look at the Sun, um, which I don't recommend you do unless you want to go blind, but if you look at the Sun from here on Earth, you can literally stretch out your hand with a quarter in your hand and blot it out. You can blot out the Sun with a quarter, you know, a 25 cent piece, okay? Uh, you can blot out the Sun, and that's how the Sun looks <clears throat> to scale from Earth. I mean, you get look at how small Earth is compared to the Sun. But from our point of view, the Sun looks very small. And that's at 1 AU. All right. And where am I going with this? Um, at 5 AU, let's say if you were standing on Jupiter, okay, instead of, uh, uh, instead of on Earth, the Sun would be even smaller. It would be, I don't know, uh, if, anyways, it would be very small. All right. At 5 AU. Uh, these two gentlemen here discovered uh, Ison at over 6 AU. Now, Ison is supposed to be uh, 5 kilometers or 3 miles in diameter. And if you ask Mr. Zhang Yang Li, one of the Hubble Space Telescope scientists, he'll tell you that it, might, that it could be even smaller than 3 miles. It might not even be 3 miles in diameter or 5 kilometers. It might even be smaller. Now, how ridiculous is this? If this is how Earth, if this is Earth to scale, okay, how big Earth is if you were to put it next to the Sun? And the Sun looks pretty small from Earth. If you look up at the Sun, you can blot it out with a quarter. If you were standing on Jupiter, the Sun would be so small, um, you could probably look at it directly without it even hurting your eyes. It would be very, it would be very small, okay? Um, and these gentlemen, let's have a look at a PDF here. Um, this is from the Lunar and Planetary Science Conference of 2013. Um, <clears throat> the <clears throat> Comet Ison was discovered September 21st, 2012 by Russian amateur astronomers Vitaly Nevsky and Artyom Novichuk uh, from the framework of a monitoring program called uh, International Scientific Optical Network, or ISON. Okay. At a point of its orbit, the comet was at a heliocentric distance of 6.29 AU. It was over 6 AU away. <clears throat> By the way, at 6 AU away, the sun would look very small. Okay. Never mind an object of, you know, 5 kilometers in diameter. Okay. Does that make any sense to you guys? Because it doesn't make any sense to me. Well, and by the way, if you guys haven't seen my uh, Not One Asset Says series, this is where I got the picture from, where they took a picture of Ison at uh, 5.22 AU, heliocentric distance from the sun, and it was, and it had a coma then, okay, of 50,000 kilometers. Uh, how does that happen, people? 
Uh, ISON now has a coma of 70,000 kilometers, which is which it should, by the way, because it's at the right distance of the sun. So how did it have a coma of 50,000 kilometers at 5.22 AU? If you haven't seen the series, go have a look at it. <clears throat> Anyways, I believe ISON, okay, is not a mere five kilometer in diameter object. And in order for it to achieve hydrostatic equilibrium, yeah, I mean equilibrium, it has to have a certain mass. Um, Mercury. Uh, which is just a little larger than our moon, by the way. <clears throat> it has six Earth masses. It is six. It has six times the mass of Earth because it is basically solid, solid iron. Now, if Ison is the same, and I believe it to be, um, Ison, I believe, by the way, Ison is the size of our moon. It is. It is not. No. It, it is not three miles in diameter okay or five kilometers in diameter if that's a load of hogwash i believe it to be over 2000 kilometers in diameter which would also explain its spherical size or spherical shape okay and that's why um i've i know that ison is going not going to break up Okay, I know it. I don't. I don't have to guess. And all these people that are saying it's breaking up and blah 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 blah. Well, you see the garbage science that you guys are being fed. It, <clears throat> it's sprouting a fountain of dust because only one side is facing the sun. I mean, what kind of garbage science? I mean, I don't know where these guys come from uh, or how they were educated. Maybe, maybe they're maybe they're pretty smart people. But as long as they're um, going on the dirty snowball uh, model which is absolutely ridiculous and incorrect. Obviously, there any data they try to generate or any theories they try to generate based on that model is going to be absolutely stupid. Okay? ISON is definitely um, not 3 kilometers in diameter. ISON is definitely much, much larger. I believe it to be the size of our moon. I believe it to be spherical. And <clears throat> that would explain all of its activity, its behavior, okay, um, and why it had the forward-facing jet features um, earlier, uh, with in a, you know uh, in during around the time of October um, of this year, okay, and in early September when it would, it would, it would kept uh, you know pointing out the forward-facing jet crap which turned out to be false. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, I'm just getting tired of being right all the time. Um, I've told you guys this forward-facing jet feature was absolute crap because it said sometimes it would point a little bit this way, sometimes it would point a little bit that way. Now you know why, because I've explained why. Uh, check out uh, part A and that's it, okay? Um, again, another, another CME event. I don't believe in coincidences, okay? Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens as we go a little bit further. This won't be a long one, part B. Uh, it's not necessary. I've basically given you why I believe it's big, why I believe it's bigger than they're telling us, okay? That's a coma of 50,000 kilometers at 5.2 to you. And I'm not making these statistics up. Um, the PDFs. Everything exists 50,000 kilometer for a heliocentric distance of 5.22 AU. Okay, these are not my statistics. This is from the Lunar, Lunar and Planetary Science Conference of 2013. Okay, and this object was at 6.29 AU when they started to to monitor it. Um, how did they even find something so small it wouldn't even be a speck of dust? Okay, at that distance. Um, anyways, that's my theory and I'm sticking to it. Um, I'm the one who's been right about everything all along. If you guys have been following my channel, if you guys have been following what I've been telling you guys, I'm the one who's been right. They're the ones who have been wrong every step of the way. So you can take my word for it or not. I mean, hey, I, I, I hope you don't take my word for it. I hope you go out and do your own research and come to your own conclusions, okay? Um, but I'm the one who's been right all along. They're the ones who have been wrong every step of the way. Believe it or not, 
Uh, this is what's happening now. As far as what did I, what Ison's effects will be on Earth, I pray to God that it's not going to come close to Earth. But at this point, like I said, I will not put any credence in any trajectories that are being given out at this point. I don't know. I've seen trajectories that say it's going to come to it's going to come closer to Earth than it did to Mars. And if that happens, that, that's going to be catastrophic. Okay. Um, it's not going to be an extinction level event, but it is going to give us a lot of trouble if that is true. But like I said, I will give no credence to any uh, trajectories right now. I'm just going to have to wait and see just like you guys. I'll keep you guys informed. Um, I hope you found um, this update, 12 AMB informative. I hope you found it helpful. This is the Canadian Greek. I'm out.